Hello, it is Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday today, which means we're going to be solving a midweek, mid-difficulty themed crossword. And this midweek, mid-difficulty themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Alex, Laura Sexton, Victoria Rozhishka, and as always, the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. That means they keep this channel going, they sustain it, and they allow it they allow me to make it every day. I'm very grateful to them for that. If you'd like to contribute similarly, um, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can find all of the bonus videos, as well as for benefactors like those four I mentioned, the daily solve official let's check the crosses mug. There's also a link in the description field, of course, to that page. Thanks to everybody who has contributed at any level. I really do appreciate it. And Thanks as well if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, if you like the videos, comment from time to time. Those things are all helpful. And finally, there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a um, that can be joined via a description field link. It's a nice, friendly chat community over there. So check that out as well. All right. And having said all that, let's get on to the crossword. Let's solve a puzzle. This is by Brad uh, Weekman, who's constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Let's start solving see how we get on today. Lead into box or bug? Pillbox or pig, pill bug. A pill, pill box is sort of a bunker. Um, a pill bug is a, it's a little insect. Candy whose name derives from the German Pfeffermints. Oh, is it, is it Pez? Oh, that's funny. I never actually knew that. I don't think I ever knew the, the, um, uh, etymology of, of Pez candies, but there we go. It must be that. Let's just check the crosses very quickly, but I'm sure it'll be right. Popular video conferencing app. Yes, is Zoom video conference. It's become very common in the last few years. Airbnb had one in 2020 for short. Uh, must be an, uh, That must have been the year that it IPO'd. It had an initial public offering. It was listed on public stock markets. And certain fire sale would be an LBO, maybe a leveraged buyout. I don't, I don't really think you'd call that a fire sale. Oh, why did I read that as fire sale? <laughs> that was incredibly strange. Maybe because I was just thinking about financial things with IPO. I don't know. That was very odd. Anyway, it doesn't say that at all. It says certain fire sign. So it's a sign of the Zodiac. It'll be Leo, I guess. Does that have anything to do with fires? Well, let's look at this. And it is, it is that. Weapon whose name has two accents is a pay. So we have accents over the first and second E's um, in a pay, um, the you know, sort of fencing sort. All right, here we have a tart treat. Could be a lemon bar in three letters there at the end. Um, lemon bar is a tart and sweet confection. Nicholas and Nicholas, e.g., Nicholson and Nicholas. I mean, the first people who come to mind are Jack Nicholson and Jack Nicholas, I believe, is a golfer. Jack Nicholson, of course, an actor. So something about Jacks? One-eyed Jacks? I don't know why that would be the case. They're not one-eyed. Um, I'm just trying to think of some, a phrase that ends in Jack and starts with an O and looks like it could be roughly the correct length. Let's just see if it even is. It is. Why would that, why would there be any chance of that being the case? What would that mean? I, I sort of want this to be the answer, even though I don't understand what it means. One-eyed. Oh, because, because each of their surnames has a single I in it. I do think that is actually the case. Wow, okay. It really is entirely due to this O oh, from Lemon Bar that I jumped to that. I don't even know if I would have with a different cross, like this E or this E or something. I don't, I don't think that necessarily would have prompted me to, to jump to that. But I think it might be the case. This is the one, you know, one I Jack's referring to um, the, the image on, on a playing card. And um, probably in my mind, particularly because of its usage in Twin Peaks. Um, so... Uh, the, the television series. So anyway, let's. I think that's probably right. So it's one-eyed, in the, like I say, in the sense that each of their surnames has a single eye, and we'll probably find other similar puns. 
throughout the puzzle in theme answers. Anyway, let's look at this. Cheese with a white rind, probably brie. I mean, many cheeses have white rinds, but four letters ends in E and is a commonly named cheese. Like wine age, aged in casks. Could be oaky because wine is often aged in oak casks. Sheer delight is glee, maybe? Fish thought to be named after a region in Italy. I'm not sure I fan. What about this one? Encumbers with down. If you bog someone down, you encumber them, you weigh them down. And lighthearted refrain could be tra-la, tra-la-la, lighthearted refrain. If you're sort of singing nonsense lyrics. And then if blank walls could talk, if these walls could talk, you might, you might um, muse. Machu Picchu visitors say it would be a hiker. I believe you do have to hike to get there. And, oh, sardines. Oh, sardines named for Sardinia. I never, that never occurred to me. Yeah, I never thought to think, oh, all sorts of etym etymological uh, musings today. I never thought to think about the etymology of sardines, but yeah, it seems reasonable to imagine it may be named for Sardinia. All right, next one's on me. I'll, I'll buy... If you're in a bar, oh, although JL doesn't look very good, does it? A little bit, no, just a jot, maybe. Oh, that doesn't look great either. Maybe it's not one-eyed jacks. No, it has to be one-eyed jacks. It's clearly one-eyed. What else would it be? Next one's on me. Not sure. What about this? Relatives of custard apples. Interesting. Is that a particular, are we looking for a particular sort of varietal of apple? What about this one? Soren Kierkegaard and Chris Isaac, e.g. All right, interesting. So in this case, we have their full names, and they don't share either a given name nor a surname. Hmm. Um, oh, but they each have two A's. Kierkegaard and Chris and Isaac both have double A's. Oh, double, oh, double. Double A... I'm not sure what the rest of this is. I don't know. Hmm. So what, what is going on here? Surely this is sardines. A little bit is a jot or a... I don't know what else it would be in three letters starting with a J. Okay, I'll just have to keep going. Uh, the boss familiar, familiarly is um, uh, Bruce Springsteen. So Bruce, here we go. Snack whose name comes from the Quechua, Quechua for dried meat. Oh, jer it must be jerky. Oh, interesting. I wonder what the original word is. Is that right? It is, yeah. Gooey sandwiches informally are PBJ's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Surface calculation is area, as in, um, you know, the area of a circle or some other polygon or some polygon. Um, knitter's stitch could be, oh, a pearl, P-U-R-L. That is, that's a knitting term. So what is, this looks like salsa. Yes, chip dip is salsa. Okay, and then relatives of custard apples are relatives plural. Pawpaws? I think that's a fruit, isn't it? Next one's on me. Oh, this doesn't look right at all. My first thought was papaya, but that's singular. And this says relatives. Next one, oh, I got ya, I see ya. What am I missing? I'm missing something here, and I can't figure out what it is. I have something wrong, I would, I think. Next one's on me. Oh, sorry, I'm going to turn off my, put my phone to airplane mode so I don't, hopefully don't get those um, annoying sounds. Uh, let's see, relative of custard apples. What am I missing here? Is there some kind of rebus or something? I don't know what's going on. Provide resources for, to endow, maybe? I'm not sure that's right, but let's look at the crosses and see. Kaput. Something's kaput. It's done. It's finished. It's um, broken. It's from the German kaput for broken or not working. Broncos and explorers are, well, E being capitalized. There are trucks, or truck or vehicles anyway, called, oh, they're Ford. Ford Bronco, Ford Explorer. There we go. To be nuts about someone or something is to adore them or it. To pig out is to 
go. Oh, double. Oh, double agents. I see. They're double a gents. They're gents in the sense of men, and then they have double a's in their name. That is it. This does look like a jot, doesn't it? I oh yeah, it is Papa's. It was my first thought about the fruit was correct. Wow, and I okay, and this whole thing just looked. I just didn't understand that we were splitting it into two words here. Next one's on me is I oh yeah. Ah goodness, okay, that is the answer. That all did. That all was right after all. Okay, so Persephone's lover was an Orpheus. Uh, hmm. Zeros in soc soccer are nils. Little bits are... I oh, Iotas. Is that the same clue we had here? It is, oh, no, no. This is little bit singular. Here's little bits plural, right? Anyway, an iota is a little tiny bit of something. A jot, you could even say. Send, send off. So se this is um, referring to the river in France. And so uh, that's just being used to indicate the French language. So adieu could be a French Send off, a send, send off, a way to say goodbye in French. Unhappy fates are dooms. A do doom, your doom would be your, an unhappy fate. Oh, Adonis, Persephone's lover. Boy, I actually don't remember that particular relationship. I'll have to I'll have to look that up. Uh, convex navel. So in this case, navel meaning your um, belly button. So if it's convex, it's an outie. It sort of pokes out. And... Here we have a Qatari dignitary, so an emir, um, someone who, you know, heads an emirate. And then, oh, what's the blank? What's the use? You might, you might despair. And constellation named for a mythical ship would be the Argo, so named for Argo of Jason, Jason and his Argonauts on the sailing on the Argo. And then to pig out would be to gorge oneself, to overeat. And then most of Nebraska is farmland, I guess. That seems pretty plausible. Let's check. Oh, here's one of our theme clues, probably. Percy Bysshe Shelley and Billy Ray Cyrus, e.g. Okay, well, here we have a poet and a singer. I don't know if that matters that they... Oh, two L's in Shelley and Billy. Two S's in one, but not the other. Oh, they each have Y's in all of their names. In all three names, they have Y's. Three way ties? Three way Y's? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Three way ties is the first thing that comes to mind because it sort of sounds like it might be a, a phrase, but I don't. I'm not sure. Okay. Name that becomes another name when its first letter is dropped. I don't know. Alice becomes lice. I don't think that's the answer. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if, maybe if I had this letter. Least experienced. Newest. I'm trying to think of other possibilities. Greenest. Rawest. Um, and newest is the, is the most obvious. What about this? Target of a 1970, no, sorry, 1917 uprising. Well, my first thought would be the Russian Revolution. So it'd be the Tsar. Hmm. I can delete all of this because I just don't feel very confident about this, especially this three way thing. Taunting laugh. Oh, maybe, it, oh, maybe it is an H. Because it could be ha or ha or something. Taunting laugh. I don't know. I'm trying to think of there's some other laugh syllable. What about this? More succinct. Terser. Okay. If you're more succinct, you're more terse. You're more curt or clipped. You're, yeah, well, you're, you're using fewer words, I suppose. So what is this? Three... I do not know what's going on with this one. I want this to be three-way something, but I also want this to be czar. Three, oh, wait, three wise men. What does that have to do with anything? Is that the answer? 
Oh, right. Sorry. It's just the same as the first one, the one-eyed jacks. Three wise men. There are three wise in each of their names. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, good. So what was double agents? I guess A is sort of just a pun in the sense that A is also a word unto itself in the way that, you know, I are here. It's just that it's spelled the same way as the letter alone. I think, I guess that's what that's, what that one's doing. Anyway, NCIS error. This is one of those procedural crime shows. I'm not sure who airs it. I've never actually seen it. Let's see. Word before ring or after true. True crime, crime ring. There we go. Crime ring is sort of, you know, cons criminal conspiracy. Snacks. Uh, it could be a verb or a noun. What about this? Oh, right. It's oh, it must be CBS, which is one of the major networks in the U.S. Cardiologists insert a stent. You could have a stent inserted into, you know, your your an aorta or something to to uh, ensure, f you know, flow. Uh, who might call French fries chips? Uh, a Brit. That's what you'd say here in the U.K. You'd refer to uh, French fries as chips. Although you do sometimes see fries referred to when they're thinner. Um, chips usually refer to a thicker, thicker uh, cut. Uh, snacks, bites? Oh, right, no, as a noun, yeah. You wouldn't use that as a verb equivalent, but you could say, I'll have a bite, I'll have a snack. Overworked is trite, so linguistically. So if you have overworked language, it's trite, it's been used too much. And Rathskeller offerings informally uh, breweries? That's something to do with brew. It's something to do with brewing. Brew pubs, maybe? Oh, least experience would be rawest, not newest. Okay, but that was one of the words that occurred to me. Oh, and, and czar has been proven correct. Like, I figured it absolutely had to be. Okay. Here we have name that becomes another name when its first letter is dropped. Irene? I, Iron, Irene? Irana? Rana? Uh... I mean, this will have to be a vowel. I'm not sure. I can't think. Henry the Eighth and Hubert. Oh, here's another one of these. Henry the Eighth and Hubert H. Humphrey, e.g. Um, what's going on there? I mean, there's H's clearly, but why the Eighth? Why Henry the Eighth specifically? I don't know. Maybe because eight sort of sounds like H. I, I don't. This one I'm. This one is the least, the least obvious to me so, so far. Um, second number on a pants tag, the inseam, I guess. So you've got your uh, length, and then. Um, of the pant leg and then the inseam of the, sort of the sort of preferring more to the the width I guess um, I always I always think of the second number as being waist maybe it's maybe it is more properly inseam anyway I guess I don't know the difference <laughs> maybe taunting laugh ha, okay so ha probably uh, poker deck oh no 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 never mind that h oh no no but oh, sorry i was gonna say we're not there's just a lone h there but maybe we do have a lone h because of our na h names har maybe though then we'd have two r's that's even stranger okay i'm going to delete it for now but we'll remember it might be an h poker declaration i fold or something like that for henry the eighth and hubert h humphrey for short i kid you not no lie Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. So sad or something? No, I would put an S here, which is strange. Oh, stadium sounds are olays. You know, you might have people in a football match yelling ole. Club soda garnish. You could garnish with a slice of lime in a, in a club soda. And the year in which the 1930... The, oh, sorry. The yearling in the 1939 Pulitzer winner, the yearling. E.g., it was a young deer. I read that when I was very young. Uh, let's see. Poker declaration. It is I fold, after all. And sorry, not sorry. It's not so sad. It's sue me. 
Okay, so a sort of sarcastic apology. And then Henry VIII and Hubert H. Humphrey, G. 4H, 4... I'm not sure still. Falco of Nurse Jackie. Uh, I've not seen Nurse Jackie, but I, I do know of Edie Falco and have seen her in The Sopranos, so there we go. Uh, new Wing, say add-on, so a new wing to a building maybe is an add-on to the building. And Dorothy to M. Oh, in um, in The Wizard of Oz, uh, it's Auntie M, so Dorothy is her niece. There we go. Receptionist's spot, a receptionist could be sitting at a desk to uh, welcome and direct people. Um, some summer libations could be aid, so libations are drinks and you might be drinking Limeade or lemonade in the summer. Birth place, so, um, you know, ship could be birthed, you know, could be docked. Uh, for, what is going on here? Maybe this isn't brew pubs. Irene. Oh, it is Irene. And the name is Renee. Right, I was thinking about it more phonetically. I was trying to keep the pronunciation of the second name the same or more similar, but no, that's not what it is. It's Irene becomes Renee when you move the first letter. That is what it is. Okay. So taunting laugh. What is this? I mean, it's probably going to end with an S, right? Something leaders. Uh, Ratzkiller offerings informally brewski. Oh, brewskis. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's just it's just a, a um a slang term for a beer. That's all it is. Okay, that was straightforward. So frog transformer is oh a kiss as in the as in the the princess and the and the frog. You know the transformation of the frog into a into the frog prince. Okay, and here we have wedding words are I do so wedding vows domain of SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, which even having never seen it, I do know that he is a sea creature. So there we go. Sticky stuff is not goo. What is it? I don't know. Something to bat around, an idea. You can bat around an idea, uh, which is what I need to do for that, that other cell over there. And then bar that gets smaller and smaller is soap. As you use it, it gets smaller. Oh, sticky stuff is, is sta sap as from a tree. Okay, there we go. So what is this? Four H liters? I mean, I, w I assume this is H because we have taunting laugh is ha there. Is that a pun? I don't understand it. Four H. There must be a phrase that I don't know. Otherwise it would be har in the down. It'd be for our leader, for our leaders, which kind of sounds like for our leaders, but that doesn't sound any more particularly like a phrase. I mean, it sounds like a, it's grammatically more understandable, but I still don't quite get it. I think it's probably an H because of our Henry Hubert H. Humphrey. And there, I mean, there are four H's in the, oh, I guess they're leaders just because, you know, Henry VIII was, the, was a king and Hubert H. Humphrey, a president. So, I mean, they're leaders in that sense. But is, is, that, is there a phrase for H, for H leaders? Does it sound like something else? For... I don't understand it. It's right. Um, <laughs> two days running. I have... Um, failed to understand the theme completely. I understand the other ones. Let's look at them. We have one, oh, and they go one, two, three, four, actually in order, so that's nice. We have one-eyed Jacks, Nicholson and Nicholas. We have one eye in each of their names. We have double agents or double agents. We have two A's in each of the names of Soren Kierkegaard and Chris Isaac. We have three wise men because we have three wise each in Percy Bysshe Shelley and Billy Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus. And finally, we have four H leaders. What does that mean? Because we have four H's between our two leaders, Henry VIII and Hubert H. Humphrey. 
maybe that's a term in business or something. Maybe there's sort of some kind of principle of being a 4-H leader if you're sort of happy and helpful. And I don't know. I have no idea. I, it, it sounds like the kind of thing that you could imagine there being sort of business jargon around some kind of management training course that teaches you to be a 4-H leader or something, but I have absolutely no idea if that's actually the case. Completely grasping at straws here. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to leave it. I think I'm going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, um, because I do not know what it is. <laughs> but I assume it does mean something. I mean, I assume I'm the one who's uh, who's failing to understand here. And, um, and, and the puzzle actually makes perfect sense unto itself. But, but there we go. That was the, <laughs> the Wednesday crossword. And um, let's see. In fact, because I'm on that, because I'm on that, uh, that track, I'm going to go back to yesterday's puzzle and discuss its theme because uh, I was given an explanation by Xander Watt in the comments. And I think a few other people commented as well. Um, but I'll just read this because it was the first comment and other people seem to agree. So we had our theme clues that were clued by a revealer three hole punch, which was said to clue them collectively. So we have our logical fallacy, our empty space and our pigsty, which each can be called a hole. So a logical fallacy is a sort of hole in an argument an empty space is a hole. And a pigsty, which was one that I didn't quite understand, that one is, um, you could, I didn't think of it in this way, but in a, in a colloquial sense, you could refer to a place that's very messy. It's a, it's a total hole, it's a total pigsty. So that was where that came, comes from. And then the fruit drink is a punch. So together we have three hole punch. We have three holes and a punch, three hole punch. So that was it. And um, I just didn't really get the pigsty bit. So there we have it. And um, as Seth Puzzles points out, Nightmare Alley is probably what you're thinking of for the Guillermo del Toro film. It was. And uh, I, did, I did say that I think at the very end of the video, but I wouldn't be surprised if most people um, didn't catch that by the end. So thanks for pointing it out. And... Uh, let's see. Carmero Cell points out, you don't need uh, to make the subject explicit in Spanish either. Uh, verb conjugation is enough. So I had I had said that was true of Italian, true of Spanish as well. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, anyway. Uh, oh, any prophet points out regarding the <laughs> through being shortened to THRU on traffic signs. Uh, any prophet believes it's simply about shortening the word so it can be as large as possible on the sign. That's a pretty pretty good thought. I'm sure you're right. Anyway, those are some. That was the theme from yesterday and some more clues from yesterday. So uh, that's that for today's video. I'll be back tomorrow with the Thursday edition of the crossword. Might well be a tricky or intricate or funny or clever theme. We'll find out. So join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh -huh.